on a problem like this. If I wanted to uh, graph the tangent, the first thing I'm going to have to see, ladies and gentlemen, for every single one of my graphs is I'm going to write down the amplitude, the period, the x scale, the vertical transformation, and the phase shift. Period, we love that one. That does not exist. The period is going to be pi divided by b. Well, here, my coefficient, actually, let me do this below. My period, in this case, is pi divided by b. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you can see that my coefficient of my x is 1. So it's just going to be pi divided by 1, which is just equal to pi. Right? My x scale. Um, my x scale is going to be um, pi, or whatever my period is, pi divided by b divided by 2. Right? Well, pi divided by b, which is my period, is pi. So my x scale is pi divided by 2. Okay? Remember, this is my personal preference on how I do this. All right? um, my vertical transformation is d, which is non-existent. And my phase shift, which is going to be x equals 0, because there's no b and there's no c. So therefore, is there any phase shift? No, I'm just starting at 0. Right? I'm not shifting left or right at all. So now we just need to go ahead and graph this. All right, And to get an idea of this, we can actually go through um, some of these points and evaluate them. But So my x scale is going to be pi halves. That means every single important point is going to be pi halves away from each other. So I'll start at 0, which is the part of my tangent graph. Then the next one is pi halves. So 2 pi halves, so pi halves plus pi halves is going to be pi. Then we have 3 pi halves. And then we have 2 pi. And I'll go in the negative direction as well. OK? So the first important point, as you guys looked at, um, we know that at 0, the tangent graph intersects right here. The next important point is an asymptote. Then the next important point is an x-intercept, then asymptote, then x-intercept. Over here, going working to the left, we have x-intercept. Next important point for tangent <coughs> is going to be an asymptote. Next important point, x-intercept. Next important point, asymptote. Then an x-intercept again. All right. So on this tangent function, there's no reflections. There's no shifting. There's not anything going on. Now, I'm not going to be too concerned about the pi, pi over or the 1 fourth. I'll show you guys how that affects your graph. All right, But just to graph the general idea of what this function is going to look like, we know that it has to approach. And there would be three periods of our graph. Now, some of you might say, well, all right, so how is that 1 fourth affecting our graph then? All right, I'm not going to be too concerned about this. But let's go ahead and <clears throat> let's go ahead and say let's let's look at our x scale at pi over four. So if I did my pi and I did pi over four, right? Then what that means is at pi over four and at three pi over four, I have two additional points. That's what my x scale is, right? My x scale. If I said if I want to break this up into fours, therefore I'm breaking now my period, or sorry, right here, <clears throat> I'm breaking this period into force instead of halves. I'm just concerned with you guys dealing with halves so you know where it crosses and know where the asymptote is. But if you broke it into force, then you can determine what is this point and what is that point. So how do you determine that point? Well, that, this tick mark is pi over 4. So then I would just do, what is the tangent of pi over 4? And the tangent of pi over 4 is 1. And the tangent of uh, the tangent of negative pi over 4 would be negative 1. Okay? So using your x scale dividing by 4 is going to give you a better idea. Because as I mentioned, sometimes this graph is going to look very skinny. And sometimes it's going to look very, um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. It's 1 fourth, right? I knew I was forgetting something. So your pi 1 fourth, the pi of 1 fourth is equal to 1. That's what your parent graph looks like. Your parent graph looks like this. 
But now it's 1 fourth times 1. So 1 fourth times 1 is what? Just 1 fourth. So now you guys can see that this graph, instead of it looking like the parent graph, it actually now looks something more like that. So do you guys see how the 1 fourth affects the graph? Because if tan of pi over 4 is 1, but then you multiply by 1 fourth, so now the graph is going to be looking much, wi much wider. It's kind of being like stretch compressed down. You got that, TJ? OK. So really, these are going to be much wider in their effect. All right. I'm not going to be as concerned with you guys going through all that. <laughs>